My name is Cameron Wallace. I'm the manager of the client services team. I've been at the Neighbourhood Justice Centre since the commencement in 2007, where I actually started as the mental health clinician based here. And over a period of time, I moved into the position of actually managing the multidisciplinary team that sits here, which is the client services team. <coughs> the client services team is, in a sense, the clinical component that is attached to the Neighbourhood Justice Centre. The client services team was brought together to actually address the underpinnings of what has brought people into the lists at the Neighbourhood Justice Centre, but also what may bring people into the centre more broadly. So it carries a range of specialties across a range of different disciplines and is composed in the main by actually external service providers, which represents a significant departure from how justice would normally do its business in this area, which would be more about centralising agencies attached to the court. So the client services team, as I said before, is composed of external service providers. We carry expertise in mental health, drug and alcohol, family violence, um, applicant support, victims assistance, housing, financial counselling, employment pathways support. Uh, we maintain a, a chaplain. We have court network involved. We have an intensive mental health outreach support service. And all of those services revolve around a consistent model within the centre, which is a one client-based approach, which allows each of those services to provide their expertise in relation to that client in combination with the other specialties that we have within the centre itself. So our legal practitioners, our correctional components, the court itself, our programmatic division, that what we have is a very broad range of service providers, all of whom represent a resource based here and a resource that is attached to their organisation. And that what we know and what we will be putting in the public domain is actually that that model is cheaper to run that way than a large number of the other diversionary processes that occur within the court system. Because what we can attest to is the number of clients that are referred to us, they stay with us. And that we keep them, we engage with them, and that we could say that that both leads to the decrease in our recidivism and also gives us a cost efficiency in terms of how is it we provide such a broad range of service for quite a, an inexpensive Right. One of the benefits that is kind of attached to the model is that each of the positions based here represent a point of entry to their own service. So what we have here is that the client journey is quite streamlined and the client's access to service is very, very timely in a way that isn't paralleled elsewhere. What it also means for the client, in a sense, is that what they're actually accessing is a far greater realm of service, a far greater kind of pool of resources because what they're actually doing is accessing a community-based service provider and all of uh, the rights, roles, responsibilities and resources attached to that. What community justice requires us to do is to actually consider the integration of those external service providers, integration of their functionality. I can put people next to each other, I can ask them to talk to each other, but it will never be as powerful as actually saying that the work you do is woven together, that there is an overall fabric around what it is a provider, that each of you provides a strand and a thread for, and that it is of equal importance and integrity and as relevant as the other services you sit within. That's where integration occurs as opposed to co-location. And that's where a power is achieved that is quite different and unparalleled within the court system. And that's where a real a shared commitment around values, around structures, around justice and around service delivery is mutually kind of agreed upon by all people involved. And that's what they move towards. Holding tensions, holding professional tensions, but they move towards a commonly accepted goal and objective. And that's what community justice asks of us and requires us to do. And one of the things to be really clear about is that the client services team, whilst a reasonably significant proportion of our work revolves around the court, we're also available to every member of the City of Yarra. So it's not just about people who have a court matter listed here. Anyone who lives in the City of Yarra, is of Aboriginal background with a connection in the City of Yarra or is homeless, can access this team. And in that way where we occupy a dual position, we're actually a community-based resource. It's about saying that punishment has a place in a sense, but it needs to be balanced with a more forward thinking objective around, well, how is it I actually prevent you from having to re-enter the system? How is it I stop you from re-offending? How is it I ensure that the community is made safer by what I'm doing? Because I'm decreasing the chances that you may find yourself in the situation and context that led to you potentially offending in the first place. What we know is the majority of clients that we have, have had a service. It's that they've dropped out of contact with it, or that their episode has finished, or a whole range of things. It's not that they come into us saying, I've never had any involvement with a service system, but something around that has broken down for me. So part of our role is to help you kind of reconfigure, reinstitute that relationship. Because my hope would be that once your period of time with us has finished, you've actually got a whole new skill set for how you navigate the world outside of here.